Hey, how's it going, guys? Oh, clapping again. <laughs> I have this weird thing with the uh, clapping with my hands, but uh, I'm Corey with Creative Designs. I'm B with Creative Designs. And today we're going to be doing a very special project. Can you uh, explain what we're going to be doing today? Yeah, today this is an actual countertop that we're going to be building. This isn't a sample piece, and we'll talk about how we did that in just a second. But this piece is actually going to be going in the home of one of our local law enforcement officers. So, on behalf of Creative Creative Designs, we appreciate all of our service folks. Yeah, thank you so much. So, first of all, we, we started out with uh, the, the build on this thing. So we started using a three quarter inch MDF that we got from uh, Home Depot. Um, and then we also put a two inch face on this as well. Uh, we attach all of our faces to the front and do all of our body work, um, all of our bondo and stuff on top so that it's easy to sand. Uh, and then it went into paint. What color paint is this? So for this piece, we use the Bear Ultra Premium in a natural gray. We've got two coats on here. Everything's painted, everything's sanded. So we are ready to go with our epoxy today. Yeah. The style we're gonna be doing today is gonna be a little bit different. It's gonna be striated. However, the tools we're gonna be using are a little bit different than a normal conventional style. So while Corey starts mixing, our epoxy. Uh, we're using the Stone Coat Countertops Epoxy. We'll Best be product on the market. Absolutely. Uh, mixing equal parts A and B, B first. Um, <laughs> so he's going to be mixing that. It takes about three minutes. So while he does that, we're going to move over to our mixing uh, table here and I'm going to tell you about what colors we're going to be using for this job. Yeah, so we're going to be doing what, two quarts on this whole thing, right? So we're mixing, yes. it's a one and one. So we're going to be mixing our, our B into one part and our A into the other part. We always start with B first. It's more liquid, uh, it's thinner, and then uh, helps uh, mixing the A. So while I'm doing that, she's going to show you what colors. Let me get my bucket here. And, and also, just to clarify, while we have measured this piece, right, so we know our actual what we need, for this style, we're going to be doing a clear coat first, and then we're going to be mixing our paint colors into cups. And so we're going to make a little extra, so we make sure we have enough to fill all of those. And, and also, the, the formula for this is three ounces per coat uh, per square foot. So people are wondering, uh, sorry, I'm down here mixing. Uh, that's that's where we're at. So I'll go ahead and get this mixed while Brandon puts. Uh, all the colors together. All right. So I'm gearing up because this is a messy process and I'm extra messy. So you can see all of the work we've been doing lately, right? <laughs> Today, we're really excited. This is one of our favorite colors here. This is the Rust-Oleum 2X Metallic Aluminum. This does some really cool and crazy things when you mix it uh, into the epoxy and you mix different colors, spray some alcohol on it, very cool. We mentioned that the customer we're doing this for is a law enforcement officer. These are the, the colors that they've requested, this brilliant blue. It's gonna look very cool in their kitchen. They're remodeling their kitchen, they're gonna be doing gray countertops and a, uh, a diamond plated backsplash. So, that's where the aluminum comes in. We're gonna be mixing our brilliant blue along with some stove coat countertop metallic powder, Crater Lake blue. We're gonna be doing some satin stone gray along with some black, okay? Um, again, we said we're gonna be using unconventional tools for the striation. Instead of a paint stick, we're gonna be using a concrete trowel. We found, um, that this works really well. The rounded edge here works great. You have a handle, you can reach, reach far, you can control it, and it just moves the epoxy and the paint in a very, very cool way. Um, potentially, depending on how we go with this piece, we may end up adding some metallic alcohol. Uh, so we have ocean blue metallic in case we need it. We have our deep silver metallic in case we need it as well as our uh, pearl white. This, this does just some awesome things when you apply it to the paint and the epoxy. Gives it really a cool. different effect, it makes, it makes it sell out a little bit. Yeah. It's got to be done at the right time though, you know, rather than cheap as look that you're looking for. Absolutely. We also have a clear, um, in case we, we don't want to add color, but we want to create some cells and some cool effects. 
And then we also have our torch that we'll be using. You always want to make sure you're torching three times. You can use it intermittently. You can use it to move colors. We may add a little white if we decide to use it. Maybe not, but it's here in case we need it. Some of the other tools that we use, we may or may not use these today, depending on how, how things go. And I keep saying that because this is a liquid, a liquid product, right? It's a liquid process. So as you pour it on, it tends to have its own line and it does its own thing. And you can manipulate where it's going in a really cool way. So one of our favorite tools is the blow dryer. Um, you can see we've gotten a lot of use out of this. It's a little messy. But when you're using especially the metallic colors like the aluminum, and you use the blow dryer, the effect that it has, that it creates almost this roll over itself effect, you can look really, really cool. But with the blow dryer, it does put out obviously a lot of movement. So if you're wanting to tone down that movement and you don't want as much, then you use our heat gun. And that will manipulate and move the product as well, uh, but it won't create such a, a harsh movement there. So once Corey's finished mixing, we'll go ahead and pour our, our, our clear coat on, and then uh, and then we will get, pour some epoxy in our little cups that we have ready. Clear cup, Walmart, great. Uh, we'll spray our paint in there, and we'll mix those. We're gonna pour that, pour these colors onto the clear once it's trowel and chopped, um, and then we're gonna start manipulating it. Chop brushes. We love the shorter brushes, however, <laughs> we go through a lot of brushes. So we actually use these ones from Home Depot, they're an the inch and a half. Um, if you de-shed them for a little while, make sure they're nice and, and de-shed. You don't have, usually have a lot of breakage, you don't have to worry about the, the bristles falling out too much in the epoxy. It does happen occasionally, but not very often. How much time you got over there? Yeah, we're about done. Alright. So I also... While we have this, I want to explain the importance of mixing this uh, for at least three minutes. Um, if, if for some reason you don't mix it for a good three minutes, uh, part A and part B, they, they, they just they don't get mixed up to its full. Um, and, and, and the problem is with that is you'll, you'll eventually get sticky spots um, or soft spots too. So it's really important that, uh, that you do that, mix it per manufacturer's recommendation, uh, definitely the, first, the full three minutes. So we're just going to... You want to pour first? Okay. Yep. Pour some in this so you can get mixing. That's probably good. A little more in this one. Good. Don't add all the colors in quite yet. You can do one or two uh, because we might actually need it. Here. So, all right, so over here, we're just gonna pour this mass into the middle. Turn that over, let it uh, do its thing. And then I always like to try to just kind of mix it around here in the middle. Just really helps everything kind of blend a little bit more. You definitely don't want an issue with that. So we try to use the material, get it kind of spread out in the middle if you can, and then we'll bring it to the edges. Like to do the mass first. So yeah, I'll definitely need some more over here rather than. On the side right here? Yeah. So yeah, we're using a, a 3 8 notch trowel. What that does is obviously it gauges the thickness of material. Um, a lot of people do it in different ways. We believe in this. Uh, you definitely get the full thickness that you're looking for. So right now we're just gonna bring this down to the edge. This is the back side where the backsplash goes, so I'm not trying to roll the material over. Um, just really trying to get it to the edge, and then what we'll do is we'll chop it in and make sure that it gets all the way over. Alright, so now I'm going to try to grab some mass out here. We're going to try to bring this 
to the front. Let's get this that she's got set out for us. Again, try to blend it, mix it. You can never mix this stuff too much. Uh, with their product, with Stone Coat's product, you, you have around 45 minutes is what they say, but we've actually gone much longer than that. So, um, you know, I, I, I think that uh, you, you should have plenty of working time. We've done some pretty wild pieces that required a, a ton of different colors. Um, never really had an issue. We have used some other products uh, in the past that uh, claim they had 45 minutes working time, but uh, indeed they did not. It's very short working time. This product's very durable. Uh, and it, it's super fluid, so I mean, it, it works. Uh, with the paint primer, um, sticks well to that, and then we use our rust only that uh, works the best with this product we found. So, all right, so now that we have this, we're going to start rolling it over the side here, over the face, make sure we get full coverage. And all we want to do is just carry it down. Carry it down, and then we'll make sure we'll butter that face up real nice with the uh, with the brush. Sometimes we use a roller depending on how how high the uh, the actual face is itself. Sometimes it is easier to uh, get that material to flow and roll out better when you use a, uh, a sponge roller. All right, so now that we have that, I'm gonna set this trail down and I'm going to chop. Here's my chop brush and primed. our, oh, it's already primed, look at that. I went to prime or pull out my bristles and uh, <laughs> B already had it. She's here for me. All right, so now I'm just gonna chop this whole thing out. And what the chopping does, and you don't necessarily wanna do it in any order. You don't want anything to look man-made. So uh, the chopping breaks the air bubbles, uh, also induces air bubbles, but um, the main focus on this is to knock out the uh, trowel lines that we just put in. And this is the time where we want to get all the way to the edges, <clears throat> make sure that it gets full coverage. Chop the entire thing out. And as you're doing this, you, you definitely want to keep an eye on your bristles if they come out and easy. Don't freak out. Just uh, Try to scoop it back out with your brush. You'll be fine. The other thing that you want to make sure is try to be in a clean environment because um, that's ultimately what's going to affect the, the final product. Is you don't necessarily want uh, you know dust and, and bugs. This is our epoxy room. It's actually still under construction, so apologize about the mess. But um, you definitely want you know a heated or cooled room and uh, and definitely clean from construction debris. Uh, our wood shop is in another room and uh, you know, we enjoy having uh, separate areas. It, it hasn't always been like that, so for people who are just starting, we totally understand we have been in smaller areas uh, <laughs> that uh, weren't necessarily conducive uh, for doing this. It just took us more time. So here, here you go. Here's a, here's a, a, a bristle that came out. So all we're going to do is dig it out like that and just remove it. We have this pretty cool little gutter system that we put over here so when it drips it doesn't end up all over the, the floor. There it is. Doesn't work for every project but for straight shots like these, vanities, super fast, no mess, um, really nice design. We also have a table which is behind you and that is a our jig table that we made, um, it's, it works pretty awesome when you have bigger uh, countertops and tables. We have these, uh, it's not 100% complete, but we have these legs that uh, basically uh, they slide in and it extends the table. So we'll have an 8 footer, a 6 footer, a 4 footer, uh, you know, for diff different length countertops. So right now I'm just going through and brushing the front real good. Remember, because it's a vertical surface, as it rolls down here, it becomes vertical, and the epoxy goes on much thinner. 
um, because it continuously rolls off throughout the cure process. So you want to make sure and keep going over it, make sure it, it has plenty of epoxy on it. Um, and as it's as it kind of dries throughout the process, you want to you know either use a roller or you know something in it um, to to really keep helping it flow down. You want it to flow throughout the entire process. And normally what we'll do is we'll actually fog this piece beforehand with the colors that we're using, but because of the style we're doing today, we actually want a lot of this gray to show up through, so that isn't going to be an issue for us, but we'll show you how to do that on another piece in our next video. Okay, I seem to have got everything I wanted here. So there's that. So now I'm going to torch out all these air bubbles. Can you see these air bubbles? Might be tough to see in the video. So what we do is we torch this out. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop these bubbles. We'll have a clean slate to work with. Okay, we're gonna do this throughout the entire process too after we lay the colors. Right now we're just trying to lay this out nice and flat, get rid of the air bubbles so we can start with the color. The other thing I want to mention is we don't torch our faces. When you torch your faces, it can again it, it liquefies it even more, and the product tends to run off. So what we'll do is we will just torch the corner here so that it sits real nice on that corner, and we'll leave the faces alone. We find that to work out. Yeah. We like our faces real nice and flat. If you again, if you hit it with a torch you'll get a, the super ripple effect uh, because it, it keeps falling down on the face. Yeah. All right, so we got that kind of where we want it. Ready? Yeah, what okay. colors do uh, you want to add on here? So we've got stone gray, we've got our brilliant blue mixed with our crater lake blue here. Look at this color. That's beautiful. Isn't that pretty? And that's going to be more of our highlight, right? Correct. And then this is our aluminum. So uh, let's probably start with our stone. Okay. Um, and then we'll and all add we're, in our Yeah, all we're going to do is just mix these up real nice. So all we're going to do is lay lines. We're going to then break everything up and kind of melt it, uh, all the colors together with our trowel. Um, it leaves a, a pretty cool looking finish. So you'll see what we mean. So I'm going to start this color here. And all we're going to do. And all we're doing right now is we're just getting color on the countertop. No, no fashion necessarily, we're just, just getting it on because all of our colors are going to be blended here shortly. Okay, nothing, nothing special with that. Pretty easy technique. We've, we've done a piece like this before in some different colors and uh, our customers saw that and they said, I like that style, uh, let's go a little bit lighter. So we're just doing a little bit of the black here. A little bit of the black. Uh, just to give it some, some dimension without overdoing it. Yeah, so this is kind of a highlight color as well, right? You agree? The black? Yes. So we need just, just a little bit, which is why I only mixed a little bit. Yeah, if you, if, and, and the thing is with the black, you can always add color, but you can't take the color out, right? So you, you want to be careful with uh, That's our what we're going here. So I think what we'll do is we'll put a little bit of the aluminum, and then I want to spray, spray paint the out. entire top. So we're just going to add just a touch of these, this color here, which is sick. Just a touch of this. Do it with this black right here because it looks awesome with the black. And then here's our blue. Man, this blue yeah. is awesome. Can't wait to see how that lays out. All right, so let's uh, let's split this. We're gonna go, and I'm not gonna go all the way with this. We're gonna we're gonna stop, and then we'll add a, a little bit here, and then we'll see kind of where we're at. You know, we're not too concerned with drips and everything because this is, it's all going to get blended. That's where the uh, trowel technique comes in. There. 
that. So let's awesome. go with that for now. Okay. We might need a, an additional color um, in the in the gray. Do we have? Do we have that we can? Uh, yeah. Spray it on. Yeah. Let's do a little bit. So let's let's warm this up a little bit. You want a torch in front of me? She's gonna just kind of warm it up. Make sure and get your faces with that, you know, so that all the other all the colors come through. And we'll end up adding more colors to the face as well, so that matches. Yeah, I would say that you guys, um, if you are going to use spray paint, you should definitely use a respirator of some sort. Uh, but since we're doing the video, hard to talk. <laughs> all right. So now we're just going to start with this, and the cool thing is, is with this, using the trowel, is you can go wider like this just by tilting, or you can go thinner. So we're looking for a striated piece. So what we're gonna do is just kind of get what we want, and we're gonna walk this entire piece here. Do you need me to heat that side up a little bit? I didn't quite make it all the way over there. Yeah, maybe a little bit. tilt the piece, warm it up and tilt it. I don't know that we're going to do that on this because we also have a matching um, main kitchen piece that uh, is going to be impossible to tilt. So. This is starting to look really cool. It, it's funny because when you're doing epoxy and you, you pick out your colors and you're putting it together and then you start putting it on, sometimes you go, hmm, I'm not sure about that. Then you keep working it. And, and you keep playing with it and you keep adding colors and you can use so many different techniques in one piece. Um, if you're trying to replicate it, that can be difficult, obviously. But if you're doing it for yourself, if you're playing around, if you're making samples, if you're just making some art pieces, if, if this just becomes your way to kind of just be creative, um, the, the possibilities are, are just limitless, right? Yeah, why don't you show them what that's doing right there? See how this is starting to, it's not melding as in the colors are blending, but it's melding as in they're overlaying on top of each other. And once this is done, this is gonna have some really incredible depth, especially if we uh, hit a little alcohol yeah. on this and it starts to separate. I, I it's gonna look like you can see into it. I think what we'll do is, is we'll probably add some more color as well, but this yeah. will give us uh, kind of an idea of, of what you know, what these colors look, look like together, and ultimately what the uh, look is going to look like here. So far, I'm really liking it. As you get further and further down the piece, and these colors, they're going to continue to to do their thing, if you will. They're going to continue to blend and continue to mold together because, again, it needs heat. It's a liquid process, right? So it's moving. 
The other thing is you want to make sure and do before you start. So if you're, you have a design that you really want to keep, uh, that's important. Because if it's not level... Um, you're going to have an issue. Yeah, the design, the, the design will not stay. So. In some cases, you'll have something really cool, and you'll come back the next morning and go, oh, and it, 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 it's it not, not there. It yeah. is not how you left it. So again, the, the customer um, seeing you know, the, the sample piece, and it was all long straight, and so that's why we're doing this, and we're trying to keep it nice and straight, and then what we'll do is we'll give it a little movement to it with the, with the heat gun as well. By the way, quick shout out uh, to our son, who's our videographer today. Oh. Thank you, CJ. Yeah. We appreciate you. Shout out. We only have two hands, so if we're both using both hands, there's nobody to video, so... He, he got up for us today and uh, he's doing a great job. Doing a stand up job. Well, no, literally, he's, he's standing, standing up. up. <laughs> he <laughs> you said, Where's your tripod? We said, We're, uh, we, we're you, too poor. You are our tripod <laughs> right now. Yeah. yeah. That blue right up the middle looks oh, pretty sick. Really cool. And this, this, I don't know if you can get it on camera, but the, the, cr or the uh, aluminum. Crumb, the aluminum is amazing. It does some rad stuff. It's really starting to come together. You just keep moving further down. Things just they just keep moving. They keep doing really cool things. crisp lines that it's it's put through here kind of like little fault lines so try to keep this can you go ahead and warm this up a little bit again here please it just help keeping the, the flow going top behind it. That will be next. So you said you had some spots in mind. Where spots in mind did you have? Well, I, 
I want to say, I want to do something a little, yeah, maybe or just a, black. a, yeah, black would look really good, actually. You know, I'm thinking, Give it a little more. maybe add a little black through this area here. Let's warm that up before you do that. Just to tie it up here, just to help some of that. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking a little bit, just a little here, and maybe okay. even a tad through this blue. And then add a little blue after. Yeah, possibly. Let's see what it looks like. All the way? That's good. Right there. Okay, so now I'm just going to carry this in here. And if you want something to kind of look like a knot, you just kind of do a little circle, stop, and turn around. I mean, it's. Yeah. I can't, couldn't remember the other verse. All right, so let's add a little more here and a little bit up in that blue. Actually, maybe in this blue. Actually, that black. Don't be afraid of it because it's melding good with the silver. So I would put that black in all the blues. So yeah, that, that, uh, Keep it warm so it's easier to pull around. Put a fog a little blue on and mix it sure. in. Sure. Let's let's uh oh with this with the can. Uh, or do you want to pour? Actually, I like I, it because it has that crater. It's got that metallic mixed in. Yeah, honestly, I don't know that we need any more uh, blue. It looks pretty sweet. Okay. What do you think? You, you, think, you're looking at me, buddy. I, I think I just think it needs just a like a touch more. Maybe, up on this and I don't know. Not all the way right across, here. but like right in the middle, you think? Like here. See all the grains in there? See how it all melts. See how together? this little blue is here? Should we add just a little and extend it? Sure. Just in the middle there? Yeah. Alright. Get that drawn in. Just that little bit pulls it all together a little bit. So I'm just going to go through and try to need it to help some of those guys. The way this aluminum sits on top of the other colors, man, it looks cool. So let's, no, let's, uh, nope. I'm thinking we just tilt a little bit. We might be able to get a little bit of tilt out of the, the bigger pieces. So I'm thinking, this bear, this bear. Uh, so it maybe starts yeah, down we, here. 
Yeah, we can, let's tilt this way. So I'm gonna warm up the piece real quick, kind of the whole thing, just a once over, and then we're gonna just tilt the piece slightly. Matter of fact, I don't know that I'm gonna do the entire piece, but just what I really want to kind of move. So I'm thinking, I like this, move. Probably not going to be able to catch us, but uh, go ahead and pick straight up. Just using that as a highlighter. Yeah, you kind of get that organic look to it. Yeah, that was really cool. Alright, so All right. I think I'm done with this. I'm going to warm it up, flatten it out one more time, and then... Uh, and then I'll brush the front. Oh, you can brush the front. When we tip the table, our colors start in like we wanted to roll over this way a little bit. So now I'm just filming and then smoothing those colors out. Well. See what it's doing here? It's putting agates in it. It's fracturing those pink colors we added in. Wow. And Corey here is the uh, king, king of alcohol. Yeah. It doesn't matter what it is. And not necessarily drinking it. No, just, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> just spraying it on pieces. Yeah. She just called me a drunk. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not a drunk. Not a drunk. It's this alcohol here. But see what you do is when you do that, it just kind of organically puts in these these little fish eyes, and you know if they look man-made like this one does here, you just kind it of goes break it up a little bit. Face. Yeah, you just kind of go through and find some of these. 
And what you'll find is these metallics kind of sit on top and the alcohol evaporates, leaving the mica powder behind. Here, I'm just dabbing this side here, make sure that that's running yeah, all that the way to the in. edge. Yeah, make sure we get coverage all the way around. And sometimes, sometimes that happens, it moves, it pulls a little bit. Um, what's awesome with the Stone Coat product again is, is the amount of working time you have, it's unreal. Yeah, I don't know how long this video has been, but we can still, and it's not particularly warm in here today. Our, our heater actually isn't on, but. Uh, and, and we're still, you know, playing around with it plenty of time. So I think, I think that's it. What do you think? So I think Just, we gotta torch it a couple more times. Yeah, flatten I think say you want to torch it three times. Um, you just, when you do that, it continues to flatten it out. And what it does, it helps it give it a real nice glass finish. But uh, yeah, I think that'll, uh, I think that'll be it for today. What do you think? I think. I think so. We, uh, we appreciate you watching. We hope that you have enjoyed this. Uh, let us know if you liked the piece. Yeah, um, follow us on uh, YouTube. Um, and then all, we'll put all the links below of all the products and everything that we use today. Um, uh, until next time, see creative. Be creative. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.